The word love gets thrown around a lot when talking about your dog, but what does that really mean? Well, on this episode, I'm going to be talking about just that, what my interpretation of truly loving your dog actually means. So let's go ahead and get into it next. Let's get this week's episode going. Hey, everybody. How are you? Welcome to the Learn, Laugh, Bark podcast. I am your host, Jake, from On Dog Training Academy. We're an online dog training company, and we specialize in uh, courses. Right now, our course is called Welcome Home. It is all about getting yourself ready for when you get a puppy and then some early steps you need to be taking with this puppy that you get. It's a great course. Check it out on dogtrainingacademy.com. Also, we have free webinars on there that you can definitely check out. We're just looking to help people and this is just like our podcast. One of the ways we can do that is with our free webinars. So again, on dogtrainingacademy.com. Anyways, this week's episode, we're going to be talking about something that I think is it's going to be in my interpretation of what I think when it comes to the definition of love for your dog. Uh, some other people might have different definitions, and that's fine. Um, but I think there are some definitions of love that are maybe have all the right intentions, but when you really look into it, it's not very helpful. And it leads to more heartbreak than anything else. Now, I did a similar podcast to this a couple years ago. And I just wanted to revisit it because I just think it's that important. I think it's something that you cannot talk about enough about really what is loving your dog. And and again, this is my interpretation, so keep that keep that in mind. But I really hope you guys agree with me on this because I feel like this is sort of a foundation of what it's like to have a really awesome relationship where you love your dog, your dog loves you, and the world is just super smooth when you guys are coexisting. And so... That's kind of my goal. So the first thing, and this to me, this first thing, is something I feel like is missing. If you listen to the last week's episode, I kind of mentioned this slightly. And and what I mentioned last week was I feel like there is a I feel like there's a lack of respect in dogs, for dogs, I should say, that we need to get back. And when I say lack of respect, I don't mean People are mistreating them necessarily intentionally, or I feel, or, or they're abusing the dog intentionally, or anything like that. They're just starting to treat them more like people and less like dogs. And that is my first thing when it comes to really loving your dog: is to understand that you have a dog. This is not a person. This is not a child. Now, we can have emotional attachments to these animals like they are our children, and I think most of us do. I mean, hell, I do. I certainly have an attachment to Luda uh, like he is a child of mine, and losing him would probably be emotionally just as damaging to me as it would be for losing a child. Um, But at the same time, for me personally, I I, I... remember or I go into our relationship as though he is a dog he is not a child he is a dog and dogs have different needs and have uh, uh, different ways of communicating than children do a lot of dogs don't love to be cuddled where they're being completely hugged and like squeezed they don't like to always be climbed on they don't like certain things like that They don't like to be joked around with necessarily when it comes to like blowing on their face to see their reaction and just little things like this. It's what leads to dogs biting people and then the dog unfortunately suffering even though it's our fault because we allowed that to happen. We allowed somebody to treat our dog like it wasn't a dog, like it doesn't have teeth, like it doesn't feel like when it's in danger or in pain that it needs to defend itself by nipping or something like that. Like, we forget these things, and we have to sit back and remember, we have dogs. We don't have children, okay? This this is something that is very much missing, and if you ever look at social media, and I think I talked about this last week, but if you ever look at social media, it drives me crazy 
watching people interact with their dogs drives me crazy because they do these these TikTok challenges where it's like bark at your dog and see what they do blow in your dog's face and see what they do you know just these all these different things and you can see when people do these things the dog's face is screaming just like oh my god I'm tolerating this because I know I have to but at some point that dog's going to say screw it I've had enough I need to get this to stop and that might be nipping, biting, growling, something that leads down a rabbit trail that's just not good. The other thing I see a lot of on social media is kids interacting with dogs and how they think it's so cute that their, do- that their child is crawling all over their dog. Or, or you see this little infant baby biting the dog's ear and, and doing all these little things. And then the second the dog goes, I'm uncomfortable and growls or nips or does something that is an absolute natural response for a dog then the parents or the people have a fit about it and they get rid of the dog because the dog's dangerous the dogs are not dangerous well okay i don't want to say all dogs aren't dangerous but a lot of times when those type of situations happen it's not the dog that's dangerous it's the situation you put them into that's dangerous and that needs to be corrected by us by remembering these are dogs we have to treat them like dogs and we're gonna go full circle on this at the very last tip i have or the very last opinion of mine but we're going to move on the next one is training for whatever reason love and we do a lot with clients like this love comes in the form of like absolute freedoms right like oh i I let my dog jump on the couch i let my dog jump on the bed that's fine you know i free feed him i i let him go outside whenever he wants to i do all this stuff because i love him i want my dog to have all these great things and i'm like great cool But when you ask your dog to do something simple like a sit or a come and your dog says screw you and goes away, that is, in my opinion, isn't love. You're you're not doing anything good. You're actually, again, hurting the dog. Lack of obedience and teaching the dog that they can get away with whatever they want and do whatever they want is going to lead to some sort of heartbreak down the road. Whether, again, it's the dog runs away or the dog bites somebody or the second somebody actually tries to control the dog, the dog has a fit, right? Like... We need to make sure that that it's training. If we have kids and you say, if you love your kid and you're like, you know what? I'm not going to bring you to school. I don't want you to have to go to school because you know what? Sometimes school's not fun. You're going to just live here. You'll never know how to read. You'll never know about history stuff. You're just going to live, do whatever you want. Well, what kind of life does that really lead to a child, right? Well, it's kind of the same concept with dogs. They need structure. They need education they need to know right from wrong if we don't teach them right from wrong i can tell you your dog's going to choose wrong more often because let's let's face it sometimes wrong is just more fun jumping on the counter and taking that food off the counter that's more fun for your dog sleeping on the bed when you don't want them to more fun playing keep away that's a blast they you can't catch your dog because they're so freaking fast that's a fun game for them to play and that's just how it starts to go so we need to make sure as part of loving our dogs, that we are putting the effort and training into teaching them how to be what we want them to be, you know, well-trained, well-mannered dogs, because if that's the case, because I can promise you, if your dog is running around doing all this stuff, at some point, you're probably yelling and screaming at your dog, which is stressful for you, for your dog, whatever. The household, whether it be relationships with other family members or relationship with your dog can get damaged or broken. And that's going to be a whole other episode we're going to be talking about here soon. But if you get that training and you get that management, not only are you guys going to be more happy with your dog, but your dog's going to be more happy because there isn't a stress level. There's not uncertainty. There's, there's clear rules. There's clear training, everything. So that's really important. And to me, that type of understanding for your dog, that's love. Saying, I'm going to give you the most stress-free life I can possibly give you where we're both going to be super happy in this relationship, that is giving your dog love. The next one is enrichment. Okay, so this enrichment, it kind of goes into training and it kind of goes into exercise, which I'll talk about next. But just keeping your dog's mind busy in a positive way. You know, it can be playing with other dogs. It can be puzzles. It can be training. But some sort of enrichment, your dog needs that, right? Like, I don't like comparing dogs to people, but I'm going to do it anyways. It's like with people too. It's, it's, 
you know, if we're just sitting at home doing absolutely nothing. We'll be right back. Hello, this is Panic. And this is Sarah. And, and you, you are, are listening, listening to Music Elixir, a podcast between two friends discussing their favorite Asian artists and music. We get bored out of our mind. We tend to, what, what do we do? Like, okay, personally, if I'm doing absolutely nothing, I'm bored out of my mind. I'm going to to start eating or I'm going to like just sit there and veg out and do nothing. And then by the end of the day, you just feel like crap. Well, it's the same with dogs. They need projects, things to do, whether it be through puzzle games when you're feeding them or training or just something to kind of keep them busy. It's always nice to have, you know, bones and things like that, toys to keep them occupied. Now, when you're creating your dog, definitely make sure that you're having whatever's in there is a safe, appropriate thing for them to have. Typically for us, we'll put in oversized Nyla bones. The reason I say oversized is we don't want it to be a choking hazard if we're not around. And I don't put toys in their kennel when we're gone just because the polyfill, the squeakers, the fluff, all that stuff, the dog will get bored and chew it up. And if they learn that they can destroy toys, that becomes an expensive and annoying habit that they have that you have to then deal with. So <clears throat> some sort of enrichment I think is really good. The next one, exercise. Exercise is so critical for for your dog. It's just like, again, like people, we need to run exercise in order to get that pent up energy, especially now it's it's November and we're, we here just got a bunch of snow and for whatever reason, it's not going away and I really wish it would, but that starts to hinder what I can do outside. So that means I have to find other ways to exercise, right? I have to, I have to jump on the treadmill I have to go do stuff inside or go to a gym or whatever but I got to find different ways and as the seasons change so does my exercise um, outlets and that's fine but that should be the same thing for your dog you know just because it gets cold out doesn't mean you stop exercising your dog they still need it it's not like their energy just kind of goes poof well it's cold out so they hibernate no no dogs don't hibernate so they need exercise they need that not only for for that mental stimulation that or that physical stimulation of just running and being tired, but also keeping them in shape, okay? And yes, round is a shape, but that's not a shape that we need our dogs to be. We want to keep them in a nice condition that's going to help them through the winter when it comes to joints. It's going to help them. If you, have, if you have an older dog and you've ever watched them struggle on ice, you'll understand why maybe having them be in good condition, good shape, could really help that if you have a really obese dog and they slip on the ice that can be really damaging to the dog if not possibly at times fatal and if you have a dog that's in better shape that fall doesn't become as bad because they can get up from it because they're not lifting as much weight up trust me i'm overweight so i can talk about when i slip and fall on the ice i absolutely know how hard it is to get up and if i was you know 50 pounds lighter i'm sure it'd feel fantastic or at least better falling on ice never feels good but just get that exercise. They need it. Okay. Don't overdo it. Don't be like, oh yeah, I run my dog eight miles a day because you know, whatever. And you don't have to overdo it. Find that nice, healthy area where your dog is satisfied and that gets them through the day or a couple days or whatever, but isn't building a tolerance up to where you have to keep up with an unrealistic amount of exercise. People who train for marathons that like to run with their dogs, they're training for the marathon and they're running eight, 10 miles, whatever it is every day. And the dog is running with them. And then when the marathon's over, they take a break. Well, that need for that energy has now been created. And if it's not met, that's when dogs can get a little stir crazy or just crazy in general. And we need to make sure that they have a good outlet. So don't overdo it with your dog. Find a good, healthy thing. You know, you, there's a lot of different things you can do with them, but find an exercise outlet and walking, I will say, walking your dog, unless your dog is really old or really obese, walking your dog is exercise, but it's very low scale exercise. I would prefer playing, tugging, playing with other dogs, something like that, where there's more cutting and jumping and moving, working a lot of different muscle groups. That's going to tire your dog out significantly faster than just a nice, easy walk. 
you know, if you run with your dog, cool, that's going to probably tire him out pretty good. But walking, eh, I feel like they cannot walk us tenfold. So keep that in mind. The next one leaks into then from exercise into nutrition. This one is massive. And this is where I deal a lot with people that feel like they're loving their dog by giving them tons of unnecessary or unhealthy food. You know, and I know the key to a man's heart is through their stomach. And maybe that's the same for dogs. But man, do we have to be careful with that because I, it's becoming more of a problem. I feel like um, in the last 10 plus years where obesity in humans is, is obviously gone up and thus going up in dogs as well. And because that's sometimes how people show love. They give you, you want a little snack? You want a little cookie? Oh, you're being so cute. And that one cookie a day turns into two, turns into three, turns into 12, right? And like I know somebody whose who's mom had a dog that really didn't want to eat or was a picky eater. And she was very upset that the dog wasn't eating its full meals every day. And I tried to tell her that, you know, look, like dogs regulate, whether it's it's calorie outlets or whatever, dogs will regulate what they eat. A hungry dog's going to eat. Don't worry about it. Well, she found that her dog really liked milk bone biscuits. And that went from putting a couple in the dog's food to becoming its only source of food. She would buy boxes of milk bone biscuits, dump them into a dog bowl for her dog for meals. Nutritionally, that is abusive. There is nothing good, really, that's going to sustain a dog long term if you're feeding them only milk bone biscuits. And in turn, this dog became incredibly obese. We're talking like bowling ball obese. This thing was bad. And it did not live as long as it could have had it of not look like a wood tick and been treated better. But that was her way of, of giving her dog love was to make sure it had its full meals every day. And whatever that meant, it meant giving her milk bone biscuits every single time, every single meal. And, and you know, the pe- people aren't doing this intentionally. They're not like, I'm going to make my dog fat. <laughs> you know, people do it because it, it's a love. They feel like, well, I love you. I'm going to give you a snack. I'm going to, I want you to eat. It's all these different things. We have to step back again and understand these are dogs and we need to understand that obesity is never a love, right? Like you shouldn't love somebody and intentionally or unintentionally get them extremely fat, right? Like you should, especially with dogs. And I can't say this with people because I'm probably not a good example, but for dogs, we are in 100% full control of this dog's diet, 100%. We can determine when they eat, what they eat, how much they eat. And by us allowing the dog to get extremely obese, that's not good. I had a client, this was probably 15, 16 years ago. I had a client who sent us, who had this dog. It was a, it was like an Aussie. And uh, the dog was really fat. And the guy sent us a package of sausage so that we could cook the dog sausage links every morning breakfast sausage links those little ones oh yeah she eats a couple of those every day he or she i can't remember eats a couple of those every day and i just was like okay so this is a feel good for the guy he does it to make himself feel good that he's giving his dog this really yummy thing but when you looked at the impact of the dog itself the dog was incredibly overweight joints were stiff things hurt when the dog got up and it just wasn't good And I told him that, and we did not cook him sausage, by the way. The dog did not get anything like that. They got their food, and they ate their food, and that was it. You know, of course, we're giving training treats, and we'll give chews and bones and stuff like that as we feel like it's it's necessary, but we're not really big into just random rewarding that doesn't really mean anything. So keep that in mind. Really be aware of their nutrition. Um... Quality of food is super important as well. Like, don't just go buy the cheapest food. Buy what you can afford. It's better than nothing. Buy what you can afford. But if you can afford a higher quality food, not necessarily the most expensive, but just a higher quality food, I definitely recommend doing that. Um, And whether you're feeding kibble or raw or whatever, or the pre-cooked stuff, just whatever you're getting, just make sure you're doing your best to give your dog the best nutrition and feeding them the proper amounts of food. Let's keep our dogs skinny, healthy skinny, 
and uh, fit and just happy all around. Because if their joints don't hurt, they're going to be a happier dog. When dogs start running into skin issues, back issues, knee, you know, joint issues, ear issues, things like that, that definitely can be caused by nutrition, that's when we see behavior issues pop up where the dog just doesn't want to be touched because they hurt. It's just like people, when we hurt, don't touch me. You know, If I have an ear infection, the last thing I want someone to do is touch my ear. I don't really remember the last time I had an ear infection, but the, with dogs, it's that way, right? If you have a, if a dog has a broken tooth, or if you have a broken tooth, and someone starts poking at your face, it's probably going to make you extremely pissed, right? The last one, then, is to love a dog in the way that they will understand. So I don't think, I don't think that dogs understand some of our love language right? Whether feeding, I don't think they look at, at overfeeding as love. I think they look at getting meals as potentially love. Um, but just exercise interactions, um, petting them, learning the, what way does your dog enjoy being pet and doing that for them. If it means they don't like being pet on their head, so you do more chest petting. Maybe your dog doesn't like being hugged, but likes to lay next to you. So you do that more with them and you don't do the, the things that maybe are your love language because I think it's a lot easier for us to adapt to our dogs than it is for our dogs to adapt to us when it comes to love language. So really start to think about what it is your dog enjoys and loves when it comes to attention, when it comes to food, when it comes to exercise, when it comes to training, all these different things. The more we think like a dog or think like what our dogs would like, the better off in general as a whole we're going to be. I want to see these dogs live with you guys forever in an extremely happy, healthy relationship. I don't want to see dogs that get displaced early because they had some hiccup happen or because the dog's health is so bad you can't afford the medicine, so you have to rehome it. We've seen that, and it's devastating. I want to see these dogs live happy, healthy lives. That is our goal when it comes to even putting our course, our, our welcome home course together. It's That was the main reason was We want dogs to be set up for lifelong success, lifelong happiness. And it's not just about the dog being happy. It's about you, your family, everyone being happy in this whole thing, because that's what's going to make everything just amazing. So really start to look at your dog, break it down into what they need as as just being a dog, what they need. And I'm telling you, you do these things for your dog and your dog will love you 100%. You don't have to do anything over the top. Your dogs just want to be happy and healthy. That's honestly, I think, all they care about. Pet them, feed them, love them. So, guys, that's going to be it for this week's episode. Hopefully, it was helpful for you. Hopefully, you take something away from this. Again, this is just my opinion on what actually loving your dog is, um, or at least the healthy version of it. Uh, I'm not saying if you feed your dog a ton of treats and he's extremely overweight that you don't love your dog. You do. It's just maybe in a non-productive, non healthy way that we need to kind of work on if you guys have any questions about anything feel free to uh set up a private lesson with us if you want to go through specific things whether it's with nutrition training anything like that you can set up set that up through on dog training academy.com um otherwise if you find this this helpful make sure you share it with other people you can comment if you're listening to this on youtube if you're listening to this Uh, through like Facebook or something, you can certainly comment. If you know, if you have anything you'd like me to cover in a future podcast, send me a private message. I love hearing from people who are enjoying the podcast and have some suggestions for things that I should be talking about because I'm always willing to talk about what you guys want to hear, of course. So thank you guys so much again. And guys, like always, we'll see you next week. Good dog.